Praise God. Glory. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your love and your compassion. We thank you, Father God, as the word is about to go forth this night. We know, Father God, that you are opening up hidden truths to us. Holy Spirit, you are opening up our thinking, our understanding. You have to bless our mindset because we cannot grab hold to your word unless you bless us to be able to hear it. And as we hear those things, Father God, we believe that we'll grab hold to those things that you so desire for us to have. And as we grab hold to those things, we'll become covenant doers of those things. We love you and we appreciate you. And to you be all the glory, all the praise, all the honor for every victory that comes out of tonight's session because we do and apply your word to our lives. Thank you, Father God. We love you and we appreciate you. To that end, Father God, I submit myself to your spirit, soul, and body. Use my mind, use my heart, use my mouthpiece to minister your word to your people this day. We love you, Father God. And everybody who agree with that prayer, say amen. amen. Turn your Bible to the book of 1 John. <clears throat> Get that off your head. You ain't outside. Turn your Bible to the book of, not 1 John, 3 John, I'm sorry. 3rd John. 3rd John. 3rd John. The last time we left off, we left off with, uh, put this thing up. Look what it says. Let's just go, let's read down from verses 1 through verse 5. <clears throat> and then we're going to pick up at 5, because if I remember right, that's where we left off at in verse 4. I think we got stuck at verse 4 for like two weeks in a row. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, we did verse 5. Yeah, we did. We love that. Do it faithful. Mm -hmm. So that do it to the right. Yeah, we did verse 5. Let's read down verse 1 through 5. And then we're going to pick up at verse 6. You're right. Thank you. Good memory. You know, as the Spirit of God has been revealing this thing to us about this word truth, about the truth of his word, as I've been as I've been studying it. Well, I'll get to that in a second. I, I just pick up where I left off as I've been studying it. Let's read down verse 1 through 5, and then we're going to get to that. It says, The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers. Praise God for his word. Like I said, as I've been studying more and more and more, about this word truth and about doing truth in, in our everyday life. Sometimes we'll, as us persistently trying to apply this truth to our lives, we'll come across mistakes that we're going to make. We'll come across those mistakes. And as you make, make those mistakes, that's when Satan pounces in on our thinking. I want you to hear that. He'll pounce in on your thinking. Uh, me and my wife was discussing earlier today, and some, sometimes, sometimes, you, well, as you're acting out the word of God and you, you're doing it, you're walking in love, you're doing things to the brethren and to strangers. If you make a mistake, you say the wrong thing, or you do the wrong thing, Satan will jump in on your in your brain, and he'll get you to start thinking that because you made that mistake, you're no longer walking in truth. Well, thanks be to God that God adds something else in his word. What did he say? He says, if a brother have trespassed against you, you go to your brother. You go to your brother. Well, that's those things are what we call corrective action. Uh, the world uses it or companies use it all the time. Uh, Y'all heard me mention a few weeks ago about um, uh, uh, using a corrective action form when you have to write somebody up. It's like if somebody make a mistake one time, it, it says it on a corrective action form. It's called the the first one is called a verbal warning. Stop it! You did something wrong. It's not to try to 
beat you down is to show you the mistake that you made. And yeah, they put it in and they put it in your your folder, your file. But thanks be to God, God doesn't keep a, a record of your, all your mistakes. Man, thank you, Lord Jesus. The world will, <laughs> the world will, but God doesn't. But God, it, within His infinite wisdom, He gives us an opportunity to correct those mistakes. Same way, if you make a mistake, get somebody else, and you realize you make the mistake, you just go to the brother and say, hey. Sister, say, hey, brother, I, I did this. I made a mistake. Will you please forgive me? What are you doing? You're just cor you're correcting your own mistakes. You're correcting your own mistake. 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 That is the main reason why God tells us to live righteous. Because once you start reading the word of God and you start looking, what does it say in the book of Corinthians? Any man, well, hold your finger there. No, 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 stop. Because if I'm jumping ahead, I'm jumping ahead, slow it back down. Let me let me bring in verse 6 first. Because <laughs> I, I, I just go, man. I just go with it. Look what it says here. It says, which have borne witnesses and thy charity before the church. Whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt what? Do well. Thou shalt do well. Thou shalt do well. He's talking about this godly sort. You'll do well. You'll do well. Watch this. Verse 7 again. Let's verse, not verse 7 again, but verse 7. Because for, because that for his name's sake they went forth. Taking nothing of the Gentiles. They went into a whole nother culture of a race of people. And they went in just obeying God. Now think about it. When you go into a different land like me. I, if you look at me, I'm a black man. You can see that I'm black. But if you look at my history based on my father and my mother. You'll be like, you mix, you right, but you can't tell that I'm mixed just by looking at me. You you can't tell. You look at him, he's like, oh, he a brother. Uh, yeah, cause I, I mean, I fit right in with black folk. But now that I'm married to a Caucasian lady, I'm going into a whole nother level of trying to fit in with another culture, another race of people. That's what's going on here. That's what's going on here. That's what's going on here. Look what John is doing. Look what he says. Which have borne witnesses of thy charity. You have brought forth witnesses of your love toward the brethren and or to strangers. People can see that you genuinely do care about other people. They can see it. They can see it. That's the man. Do not ever sit up here and think that well he don't have enough money, or 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 he's struggling in this area, or he don't have enough he don't have enough uh, clout, or the world will call swag. You know, no, no, can't. Then now how you gonna uh, say that I ain't got no swag? Man, swag ain't got nothing to do with nothing. If you walking in love with people, regardless of people's race, ethnicity, religion, or their culture, or even their sexual preference, whether they're homosexual or a lesbian, it don't even matter what color you are, Chinese, Africanese, Blackanese, Whiteanese, it don't even matter what color you might be. If people can see that you genuinely do care, they'll pick up on that. They may not like a lot of the stuff that you stand for, but they'll be able to see it. That's why it is so important that we live a righteous lifestyle before people. We have to always, us as believers, we should always 
always, always be watching uh, how we are acting toward people. What you say out your mouth, what you do. Because as soon as you make a mistake, Satan, yeah, he going to jump in your thinking as well as he going to jump in somebody else's thinking. Because he don't remember, we got an enemy out there. Now, I don't, now, don't, now I don't want to hear nothing about all this stuff. People coming up on this, this crazy stuff on TV and they saying what well, the devil made me do. Man, the devil can't make you do nothing that you don't want to do. Can't make you do nothing. Bible say, um, don't let a man say when he, uh, he is tempted, he is tempted of God. You can't say when you tempted, you tempted of Satan. Because God won. God don't tempt nobody else. But when you draw drawn away, you are drawn away of your own lust, your own desire. The word lust in itself is not a bad word. It's not a bad word. I desire. It's, it's just another way of saying desire after. Like me, I desire or I lust after. The Bible tells us what it said in First Corinthians, uh, First Corinthians. It says that we should covet the best gift. The same covet that God says to us not to do. But he tells us to covet these spiritual gifts. See, y'all looking at me. That, that's why I want to go, go over to the book of Corinthians. Y'all looking at me like, I ain't never read that in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> go over to the book of uh, uh, First Corinthians chapter 12. First Corinthians chapter 12. Look what it says. Drop all the way down. If you go read down to it, well, let's just go read verse 28. Then we're going to get to it. Look what it says. Verse 27. We've been kind of like studying on this. and We briefly studied on it uh, through the uh, Sunday morning uh, services. Or we've been studying on you know, fulfilling your function, the purpose. And we've been bringing it all together, all these different gifts. Look what it says, verse 27. Now ye are the body of Christ. And members in particular. We are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. We are the body. We are the body. You're not just you're not just in the body. We are the body. Remember all this unity doing working together, learning to work together, learning to put things together, coming together as one big unit. There's one big unit. Jesus being the head of the church. We are the body. I'm you seated at the right hand of God. Look what he said, verse 28. And God has sent some of the some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. After that, the, after that, miracles, then gifts of healings, then the word helps, governments, and diversities of tongues. Governments, that means rule, I mean, there's a set standards. There's rules and regulations. There's, there's governors, there's mayors, there's presidents, there's bishops, there's this, there's overseers, there's company owners, president company owners, there are managers, there are shift managers. They're area directors and area managers. Blah, blah. What did, 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 did all that fit up into that word governments? And then he said diversity of tongues. Watch what he said in verse 29. Are all apostles? Everybody in the body of Christ can't be an apostle. Mm -hmm. I'm not an apostle. I might be one in 10, 20 years from now. But right now, I just know I'm a pastor. That's it. And I know I'm a teacher. I also know I'm a father. Uh, uh, Dr. Frederick Casey Price, 30 years, uh, was it, 40 some, 40 some odd years ago, he didn't set out to become an apostle. He just started obeying the word of God. Dr. Sammy Holloway, he didn't set out to become no doctor of ministry. He just, he just, he just walked, he, he just kept obeying God, and then now he's fulfilling that role. Look what it says. Are all workers of miracles. Everybody can't be a Benny Hinn. <laughs> well, what did he say? Have, it, have all the gifts of healing. Everybody don't have all the gifts of healing. Do all speak with tongues? No. I'm born again, baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit. You might just be born again, and you ain't baptized and filled with nothing. you just born again. <laughs> he said, do all interpret. Me? I have tried, I've practiced it, tried to step out there and interpret tongues. I've tried to interpret my own tongues. 
ki robo sa maki raba shade maki to bo shen ne ba ki este bro sen ne ba la Father God, please reveal. I believe I receive the interpretation of what I speak. And sometimes it nothing, it's just nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we'll look what it says, verse 31. But covet earnestly the best gifts. Oh, whoa, covet. Yeah, that same covet. When he says in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's ox, or his mule, or his donkey, or his wife. <laughs> you don't covet nothing. But the same word covet. So the word lust, he said, covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet show I unto you a more excellent way. A more excellent way. When, when you get before people and you walking in love with folk, people will be able to pick up on that. You covet the uh, to loving people. Now, it's going to be a bunch of I told you souls once Jesus come back. <laughs> you might not ever say it, but it's going to be a bunch of them. That's one of the reasons why I like, like, uh, what is that? I, I, like me, I'm not going to fall out of love with you if we having a discussion about certain scriptures. I'm not going to fall out of love with you. If you wrong, or if I'm wrong, when Jesus come back, we'll just go before Jesus. Jesus did such, 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 such. Well, no, I read this the way it was. If I'm wrong, you're going to be in a position to say, I told you so, Ivory. As well as vice versa. Why? Because it, 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 it does this, me arguing with you and get, walking out of love, getting out of love with you, is it going to keep either one of us from uh, going to heaven or ending up in hell? No. Then just let's agree to disagree. <laughs> and then move on. Yeah. Oh, come on, man. Uh, Y'all, you we, we just read it. Go back over to 1 John. I mean, 3 uh, John. Why do I want to keep going to 1 John? We said the 1 John so long, man. Look what it says. Look what it says. He says, verse 6, which have borne witnesses of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sword, thou shalt do well. If you bring somebody in with you, and you doing, and you hanging out with them, and y'all sitting up there doing what you're supposed to do, and, and you obeying God, he said, you'll do well. Yeah, you're going to make some mistakes. You're going to make some mistakes. You are. I can tell you that right now. But now, since you got other scriptures to fall back on, what does it say over in uh, 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 Romans chapter 8? Thou, therefore now there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh. You putting forth your best effort to obey God and you're walking in the spirit. If the condemnation comes, who's bringing it? Satan. Don't let Satan sit there and play with your brain. Because he will. If you putting forth your best effort and you start feeling guilty, you start feeling guilty, ask yourself this question first. Lord, what did I do wrong? If nothing immediately pumps up, because the Spirit of God don't want you sitting up there dwelling in that condemnation. If nothing immediately doesn't prompt up, you know that's the devil playing with your brain. That's when you say, no, Satan, in the name of Jesus, I've been walking by faith, not by sight. I've been putting forth my best effort. I've been walking in the spirit and tell you right now, get out of my head in the name of Jesus. Satan, before you know it, Satan will be gone. Satan will be gone. And you ain't got nothing to worry about after that. Look what he says. He says, you will do what? You'll do well. Why? Because... That for his name's sake, they went forth taking nothing of the Gentiles. Taking nothing of the Gentiles. For his name's sake. Why? When they didn't take, when they went in and started well, living this holy lifestyle and teaching other people and doing, doing the work of the ministry and leading people to Jesus Christ, walking in love with people, people picking up on that. Notice, even when people was trying to give them something, they didn't have to take nothing from them. Why? Because God supplied their need. Remember over there in the book of Luke, I think in Luke chapter 8 or 9, 
Luke chapter 8 or 9, when Jesus had sent out the 70 other disciples, it wasn't just the original 12. He sent them out two by two. And when he sent them out, he said, don't take nothing. Don't take your purse. Don't take no script. Don't take no extra set of clothing. Don't take nothing. And then when they went out two by two and went into all the world in, in that little area that they were in, when they came back, Jesus said, did you lack anything? They said, no, Master, we didn't lack nothing. Why? God supernaturally just supplied their need while they was out there. <laughs> Why? Why? Because they was walking in the truth. They was living this holy lifestyle. They was let they went they went out there trying to, oh man, you know, we gonna go, Jesus ain't gonna be around us. We, we gonna go try to, man, I've been wanting to talk to that girl over there. I'm, I'm, man, you got a wife at the house. Yeah, I know, but I want to give me a piece of that action. No. Leave him. They went out there in business, on business, serving the Lord that God. Well, Y'all hear me, man. Look what it says. Look what it says. Look what it says. Oh, we're going to get to three verses today, man. Look what it says. We, therefore, are to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. Back to this word truth again. Back to this word truth again. Look what it says. We, therefore, are to receive such. Receive what? Receive what? Receive that... You live in this holy lifestyle. God is going to supply your need. He's going to take care of you. And what else did he say? We might be fellow helpers to the truth. Fellow helpers. From this day forward, stop trying to do stuff for God. There's nothing that you can do. Hey. There's nothing that you can do that is going to uh, that you can accomplish that you're doing it for God. You're not in that position anymore. <laughs> King David, King Solomon, and all the other people up under the Old Covenant, yeah, they did things for God. But now that you are a member of the body of Christ, why would you have to do anything for him? You just help him accomplish what he needs to get accomplished. Oh, Lord Jesus. Y'all hear me? Y'all looking upside my head like I'm just speaking Greek. Okay, I'm going to say it again. There's nothing that you can do that is going to make God receive you anymore. There's nothing that you can do that is going to put God in a position to where that you have to uh, approve yourself to God. There's nothing that you can do that is going to um, increase your status with God. You just read. You are already... In the body of Christ. You're already there. The only thing that you can do. Is live this righteous lifestyle. Before mankind. And when you do that. You become a fellow helper. To this truth. That Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the son of the living God. You become a helper to it. Just like, in, just like in businesses. People are always trying to become, well, not people, not always. It's some people, oh, they, they don't want to own nothing. It's that they don't, you, you can see that in people's walk now. They don't want to own no car. All they, want, they, all they want to do is pay a car note on it forever. That's why it's like that. You don't even see commercials anymore. I ain't seen a commercial in so long to where you can uh, buy a car and become an owner of it. 
They're always talking about what? Leasing it. Talking about renting it. Even when it comes to homes. If you own your home, if you own your own, if you own your home, they consider you owning this home only because you put down a down payment on it. But if you put down a down payment on it and you making a monthly note on it, technically you still don't own it. Why? Because you don't have the um the documentation for it. You, you don't have the deed to the house. Then they come with this swooping thing. If you want to own your home, you can refinance it. So now I'm going to refinance my house, put myself more in debt for another 10 years just so I can get an extra 10 grand right now or extra 20 grand right now, which is prolonged keeping me more and more in debt. God says you are in the body. And by you living this righteous lifestyle, you become a helper, a helper or a partner. You become a partner in the testimony that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Oh, man. I'm, come on, people. Get this. I'm preaching this better than you getting it. I want you to open your ears. Holy Spirit, open up their understanding. Because they're looking at me like I'm crazy. They, they, they're hearing it, but they're not hearing it. You become a helper. You become a partner. You become a partner. Then God say, then God say that He said, I shall live and not die, and I shall show forth the works of the Lord thy God. Ain't that in the Bible? Yeah. Hmm. I shall show forth. Watch this. Turn your Bibles over to Oh man, my clock. This ain't like that clock just be taken away quick. <laughs> Look what it says. Turn your Bibles over to the book of James. To the book of James. James. Oh. James chapter. Where's it at? Where's it at? I ain't crazy. A brother have not the faith. Come on, there you go. Have not the faith. How can my beloved brother have not God chosen? Okay, look what it says. James chapter 2. There you go right there. Look what it says. Chapter 2, verse 5. Look what it says. Hearken, my beloved brethren. That one key word right there. Brethren. <laughs> brethren. Look what it says. Hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which hath which he hath promised to them that love him? Look what he says. Hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith? Do not sit up there and think he's talking about somebody who ain't got no money. He's talking about all the people who really didn't, they, they, they thought that they didn't have a chance before God. They wasn't the best high and clouded person or people in the earth. They didn't own the biggest businesses. All they did, all they did was just trust in the Lord that God. And Jesus and Jesus, the Peter, the disciple, they said, hold on, if rich men can't be saved, who right. then can be saved? And Jesus says, with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. Even the rich folk. I know a few rich folk. I know a couple of millionaires. I know a couple, just two. I know two of them. <laughs> I know two of them. But you... You, just by looking at them, you'll never be able to tell that they're millionaires. They drive, they say, they never, I never spent over $2,000 for a car. And they won't. They got two or three cars. They just, they, they each car costs about $2,000. They say, I ain't spending that much money for no car. It ain't worth nothing. They live in a regular old house. 
You couldn't even tell. That was a book came out a few years ago, a few years ago called The Millionaire Next Door. Nobody even knew the dude was a millionaire. Didn't even know. Didn't even know. Why? He says, God have chosen. He chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom. Heirs. Hold on. You an heir? Here's another big word. You are a partner with God when you live a righteous lifestyle and proclaiming his gospel. People will persecute you. Why don't you get caught up in this? I ain't doing that. People look at you and they say, well, you know, they say, if you're working on a job or something, they're coming to the customer call or employer, somebody come in and they complain. To them. They say, Ivory, uh, he cussed me out the other day. And everybody that rang me like, no, he don't cuss. He don't even let words come out of his mouth like that. He, for what? He don't do that. Ivory tell a dirty joke? I ain't, I ain't even Ivory. You just putting on a two for you two, you two for you for you fun you faking the front. No, I act like this around my wife, I act like this around my children, I act like this around my boss, I act like this around my employees, I act like, act like this around, around my family. This is how this is who I am. I don't have to put on the front. <laughs> now you are giving a description of who Jesus is before mankind. What did Jesus say? He says, you are the light of the world. You let your light so shine before men that your, your good works will glorify God. Why? Because I am a fellow helper of this truth. I'm, I, I'm not the truth. I didn't come up with it. Jesus says he is the way and the truth and the life. He is, but I'm a fellow helper in proclaiming this gospel before men when I live righteous, when I don't get caught up in all that stuff. Glory to God, man. Go back over to the book of 3 John. We're going we're gonna to come to a close here. We knocked out three verses today, people. Look what he says. Let me read that again, verse 8. We therefore are to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. Receive what again? Receive this information. Hey, God wants me to prosper. He wants me to prosper, even as my soul prospers. Why? Because I'm walking in this truth. What truth? That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. People, people look at you and they'll say, why don't you, uh, you're always talking about that Jesus stuff. And every time I look around, how come you can't, how come you just can't use some basic logic? That basic logic what got me in trouble before. I'm not going to go down that road anymore. I stand boldly before the throne of God. I, I like to be able to go before God without having a sense of guilt and condemnation. I, it, it, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's a whole better life than walking around. Well, I don't feel guilty. You trying to tell me? And, and maybe you don't. <laughs> maybe you don't. There's some people out there, they don't ever feel guilty about nothing that they do. Which lets me know that they're not born again. Because a lot of people just like, they like, well, he's just such a good man. Yeah, he a good woman. She a good woman. You trying to tell me that God going to send them to hell so they be such a good person? Think about it. When you were born again, before you got born again, didn't you do some good things? You did some good things. But those good things can't save you. Ephesians. It's not of works. At least you can boast or brag about it. You're saved by grace. It ain't based on what you could do. Stop trying to do stuff to God or for God to try to make him accept you. You accept his son and he's already because he's already accepted you. And then begin this walk. Of living this righteous lifestyle. Cleaning up your act. Cleaning your mouth out. Sometimes you might need to go stick a bar of soap in your mouth. The way it's used to do. I remember my mama did to me once. A long time ago. Said some word. And all of a sudden the, the bar of soap came in the form of a slap. First time I ever said a bad word in front of my mama. She says, as soon as I got it off my lips. 
<laughs> Mama, did you check them kind of words around here? Don't you ever say them though? I was like 14 years old. I got slapped so quick. <laughs> I learned not to use those kind of words, at least around my mama. <laughs> Praise God, man. But I learned. I learned. Now it's like I'm not going to go down the road no road anymore. Why? Because I got this word filtering through me. And I understand that I am now a fellow helper to proclaiming that Jesus is the Christ. I'm a fellow helper to it. I'm a fellow helper to it. So you can take anything from that. When you live righteous, remember you are a fellow helper to proclaiming that Jesus is the Christ. That's why don't let Satan bring condemnation to you because when you make that mistake, he'll beat you up, man. Man, he'll try to jump on you and make you feel guilty. And you just say, no, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. And you get back in righteousness. Oh, man, it's good, man. I'm going to buy this CD myself. Praise God. Hey, y'all. I love y'all. Thank you. Continue to support us, all those who are supporting us prayerfully as well as financially. Remember, if you want to send any kind of offering to this ministry, praise be to God. Our address is always located on, this, on, on our page. Look it up. Send, send an address. Do not send cash in the mail. That's crazy. Don't do it. Don't do it. Hopefully here real soon, you'll be able to have, we'll have some things set up to where we can do some online giving. To where you can, you know, type your credit card. It'd be all secure and stuff. We're working on that right now. You know, it's a slow process, but praise be to God, we will get it done by faith. And that way your gift will be able to go right on into this ministry. And we stand in faith with you and believe it that God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Why? Because you communicated with us. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Glory to God. And remember, continue to learn how to follow Jesus Christ faithfully, holy, and holy. God bless y'all. I'll see y'all next time.